this problem calls for the summation of three numbers, uh, integers. So this problem is inspired from a link code um, in this link. Uh, given an integer array uh, nums, uh, so this is a, an array of integers returning all of the triplets, i, j, and k. Num, i, nums, j, nums, k. So these i, j, and k, these are indices in the app. Uh, in the array, such that i is not j, i is not k, and j is not k. So you gotta make sure all these indices are different. And in such that, right, that's condition number one. And condition number two is, is that all three of them, um, nums at indices i, j, and k, so they, may, they, they need to add up to zero, okay? So this is the premise. Uh, we're given a, a, an array of integers to begin with, and this is the constraint. Uh, pretty normal, and you can have negative numbers as low as minus 105, uh, so on and so forth. And the um, uh, return value must be a list of lists, right? So this is a list of all triplets, basically, and that's what we, we've got here. So we've got the bootstrap code, uh, let's get going. The most common uh, uh, way to solve this problem is use uh, what we call low and high pointers approach. Uh, this approach involves uh, sorting the array first. So there is an element of sorting. And this sorting, you know, typically results in O of uh, uh, n log n, right? Complexities here. But anyway, if assuming that we can sort this um, uh, uh, elements first, um, and that introduces this much time, um, you know, in O of n log n, uh, we can order these numbers uh, in the ascending order, for example. So that gives us uh, basically this next step, right? This is zero step. One and two. So this first step in, involves having three pointers. So i is what we got here, right? So if you think about i being zero, low would be in i plus one at that point. And low moves from left to right and high, which is the pointer that moves from right to left, right? Um, and then you want to keep uh, basically checking, right? Checking for uh, the sum, right? Nums i plus num j plus j equals zero. Keep them checking. If they're not checked out, then you move either low or high, right? Depending on what the value is. Because remember, everything is in sending order. So you can move the two pointers, left and right, the low and the high uh, accordingly until both both low and high uh, crosses each other. At that point, you stop the iterations. So let's say, you know, you're done to check for the very first one. Um, now uh, you're ready to move your I pointer to the next one, which is I equals one. Again, low is I plus one and high is array length minus one, right? So you do the same iterations again, uh, double checking and see if this works, so on and so forth until uh, you're basically at the end, right? Your eye is almost at the end of the, the array. So this will give you um, a, a pretty much like a brute force um, a way of uh, solving this problem. Um, at the end, every single time you, you have something checked out, meaning uh, numbers i, numbers j, numbers k equals zero, um, you know, following the condition, right? I is not J, right? I is not K, and J is not K. Then you persist it into a list, right? And then, and then add them all to the array, to a list of lists. Um, at the end, you will have the entire list and return it that way. So that's kind of the, the approach that we're gonna be uh, taking. And, and note that um, uh, in, in the context of our problem, uh, you can treat low as uh, pretty much J, right? So your K is actually high here, okay? So, so this is a very clear I, J, and K, and that's how we're gonna, gonna move, uh, solve our problem with. Let's work on the code. So the very first one is to sort the array, right? So this is very easily done using the arrays class, um, and you can sort it as is. You don't need to return it. This is passed by reference. Um, and the, the numbers, uh, integers inside this array uh, will be sorted in the ascending order by default. Um, the next thing is to create the return elements. So. Uh, let's just make our code compile first. Um, this is what we returned out, right? And this is the empty uh, array list that we um, that we created here. So let's make sure that this is that. All right, just uh, let's begin. So note that um, we're going to use i as the the outer uh, um, uh, pointer. So notice that i goes from right index zero, right, all the way to uh, length minus one. So the, the way that we write it is i less than uh, nums length, right? Remember, array is a class, um, and this is uh, i plus plus or plus or sign, right? Doesn't matter. Let's look at this thing. Well, first of all, everything is sorted. If i is already greater than uh, zero, 
meaning both J and K, right? J and K are right to the right of the, um, the value I. Um, if nums I is already greater than uh, zero, there is no way for all three of these to be zero, right? Does it make sense? Hopefully this makes sense. So we gotta make sure that I, right, being the outer part uh, has to be less than, right? Or equal to zero, because it is very possible, right? Both I, both, both J and K could be zero as well, right? So the minimum requirement for this loop to go on is to ensure that your nums I is always, always either less than uh, or equal to zero. Otherwise, there's no point for you to, to move on. So we want to make sure. Uh, so basically, the condition is this, right? If let's say i is greater than zero, right? And if we're looking at um, the situation and also the fact that nums, the one before, right, that we just came from, like i used to be i minus one. Um, if this is the same as the one that we are looking at here, right? So this is a duplicate situation, right? Because I, right, this is the same thing. So we can continue to the next I. So that will save us uh, quite a bit. Um, so that's the um, kind of the, the four conditions here. Now let's move on to what would happen, um, you know, when I is fixed, now we're gonna need to move both low and high raise. Remember low is the same as J and, and high is the same as uh, SK. What we're gonna do next is uh, to come up with our, uh, basically our J, right, and K. So this is mm -hmm. our, integer j equals i plus one, right? So this is the same as low, um, whereas our k in this case would be nums length, right? Minus one, this is uh, the farthest this is that we can get to, right? So let's just set up a, a quick while loop and this is uh, while j, right, is less than k. Uh, let's move on here. So this is while fixing i, both j and k would then be converging to each other until uh, at such time when they can cross each other. So nums i, right, nums j, and then plus nums k. So summations of all three of this, right, this is our local sum here. So what we want to do is to ensure that, uh, there's a couple of things. If sum is, could be greater than zero, uh, less than zero or equal to zero, right? Now, because this array is sorted, Right, so there are three conditions. If sum right is less than zero, right, in this case we we'll do something else. If right sum is right greater than zero, right, and then we'll do something, uh, or else, right. Basically, that's where um, the summation equals zero, right. In the event where sum is less than zero, then uh, notice that the array is sorted. So. Um, the very obvious thing that we can do uh, is to make sure that we advance J, right? Because this thing is in the ascending order. Uh, you don't want it to move the, the K uh, pointers down. You can simply just move the J up, right? Because K is much greater than J at this point. So what you can do is uh, you can do J plus plus. Now, if the sum is, is greater than zero, that means we need to decrease the sum to a zero. And then uh, the obvious way of doing it is, is to move K, right? Uh, down a notch. Um, and that will result in the k-point going down. Uh, moving j is not going to help the situation. Um, so this is how we can accommodate uh, these two uh, scenarios. The third scenario is where we have sum equals uh, zero, right? So there's a couple of things we can do. One is, um, you know, create um, a list. Uh, this is what we're going to be embedded into a return value. Uh, we can use a utilities in actually in arrays uh, as list and simply uh, just write them out. So in Java, uh, what you can do is, is you can, uh, if you want to have multiple elements inserted, uh, you can create this simply just passing um, these uh, individual integers into it, into this list um, as such, and use the arrays uh, class to convert them, right? So this is our J, um, and then this is our K right here, right? At this point, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you know, J plus plus and also K plus plus, right? this point to make sure that's the case. Um, so that's one, one thing, uh, or in this case, you can do K plus plus here. Uh, and notice that um, this is a uh, post fix, right? Um, so the effect of um, adding uh, one to J and K won't happen until uh, this entire array has already been created. Uh, but what you need to do uh, is to add them, right? Into the, uh, the outer uh, list, right? So you can do add list. So this is gonna create an entire list of all three of these, right? 
and now you would have uh, both I and J's being added like this. Uh, there's another condition we have to uh, to correct here. So this is actually this is minus minus. Uh, there's another thing here that we need to add, and that is while I is fixed, um, J still moves, right? So um, we want to make sure that um, you know we don't want to uh, come up with with duplicates um, I's here. So while J continues to plus plus, we want to make sure that uh, the next J, which is the current J that we have after J plus plus, is not the same as the previous one. If so we should increment J again. Uh, to the next one, right? So this is very important. Uh, while, right, j is less than k, and, right, if the current j is the same as, oh, this is j, uh, is the same as the previous one, right? So then we want to make sure that, um, you know, j is is uh, moved over to the next one. So this should give us a pretty complete uh, feature of everything we need to move i, j, and k together, give us a triplet. So I would be written now, um, this solutions get triplets, and um, and this is the example that we have in the uh, in the code. Let's uh, do a quick test. So this gives us a two pair model, which is exactly it. Um, this is the solution for uh, three summations. Let's look at the time and space here. So uh, given that we have this giant for loop here with a while here, uh, and the fact that we are moving right i um, inside of i goes j and k here. This is um, o of n plus this could be n worst case. So we're talking about O of n square um, uh, solutions here. So in general, this is pretty expensive, but um, uh, if we know uh, use any other means like memorizations um, to persist information that you have already compared uh, in some sort of data, in memory data, uh, you have to go through extra loops. So this is O of n square. Um, in terms of the space, um, uh, I guess it depends on the sorting algorithm that you use. Uh, pretty much, right? You, if you're adding these uh, number of pairs into it, you, you're looking at both end here uh, being the worst case scenarios. But uh, that said, uh, there's also um, a time and space consideration for this one. And like I said, you know, time for um, a, an efficient uh, sorting is is over n log n. Uh, there's some uh, space consideration as well, depends on which type of sorting algorithms you use. But generally what we are looking at here, since uh, n log n right, is much less than O of n square, uh, we should consider this as the basically the time estimate, the worst case uh, in big O. 